Hi hey everyone, so thanks for tuning in. I'm going to be talking a little bit about a bicuspid aortic valve. Uh, and I have that. It is a congenital valve defect. It's one of the most common, if not the most common, congenital uh, valve disorder. And mine was associated with uh, something called a uh, coarctation of the aorta, which is another congenital heart defect. I won't talk about that. Uh, but it, in short, it's a narrowing of the aorta, which is the largest uh, artery in the body, uh, which is shown right here in this picture of a heart I have. And it was a narrowing, so what they did is they came in and they cut uh, the narrowing section out, and then they took the two ends and then just sewed them together. Uh, but I won't go into that. I will talk about this bad boy right here, which is called the aortic valve. And like I mentioned, um, it's called a bicuspid aortic valve. So normally what the aortic valve looks like, if we were to look at it, let's say in this direction, at this angle. So it's so here. We're looking at it this way. Um, it would look something like this. And it's got these three leaflets or flaps or if you're fancy pants like us medical folk, it's three cusps. Uh, now, the bicuspid one, bi as in like two, is fused. So two of these cups are fused, and it looks something like that. Now, uh, you might say like, so what? Well, the problem with that is that normally when the heart... Uh, contracts right or squeezes together to pump blood out um, the valve opens like that but when it's a bus cuspid by cuspid valve it doesn't open normally it opens kind of like kind of like that um, so there's less area there for blood to flow through the aorta and to the whole body now the problem is that the aorta uh, supplies the whole body and if there's anything that gets in the way of the uh, normal blood flow there it's going to eventually cause problems Okay, so the issue here is that the valve opening can be much smaller than normal or eventually become smaller over time. Uh, and many that have these uh, bicuspid aortic valve also have what is called aortic valve stenosis or aortic stenosis, which is simply put just a narrowing of the aortic valve opening. Um, so, you know, normally you have that surface area and with the bicuspid valve you would have a much smaller opening there. Uh, and how much that opening is uh, smaller, it really just varies from person to person. Uh, unfortunately, as we start getting older, our arteries start getting stiffer, and that also happens with the valves. Your heart is working 24-7, it's pumping blood across that valve nonstop, and eventually it's going to wear it down, which is normal uh, as we age. Uh, but when you have an abnormal valve, it wears it down a lot quicker, and it can calcify or harden uh, much sooner. All right, well then, so what? Uh, okay, so with a stiffer valve, the heart eventually has to work much harder to push blood through it. Um, also, it increases the chances of having other problems with the aorta, just uh, such like uh, an aneurysm or a dissection. Uh, so let me explain what that is. Uh, so let me give you a scenario, for example. So you're outside in your backyard and you're relaxing and your brother's being super annoying. So you decide to grab the water hose and sell him down. Uh, but your water isn't really reaching him because he's running around. So you put your thumb at the end of the water hose and the water sprays out much faster and you're eventually able to spray your brother in the face and he kind of settles down and stops being so obnoxious. Um, so the same thing is kind of happening there with the aorta, but the aorta is kind of like an arc here, right? It's got these vessels coming out to supply the upper body. Um, and with the narrow valve, you're kind of doing the same thing as the water hose. Um, the blood flow will be much faster, right? And because it doesn't curve as easily because of the higher velocity, it's eventually going to start banging up against the aortic wall there. And the aorta is a pretty thick, thick artery, but it's not meant to handle what it wasn't built for. So eventually it's going to cause problems. It can cause something like an aortic aneurysm, which is like a ballooning, or a dissection, which is a tear in the walls of the aorta and blood can start leaking out. And both of these can be very, very serious. If an uh, aneurysm ruptures, you can bleed out. If a dissection starts to 
get in the way of the blood flow of these vessels here, you can have really big problems with blood reaching your brain. Or worse, if it goes back towards the heart down this way, then it can start constricting, like uh, stop, it can start constricting the heart um, and not allowing it to pump naturally, and that could lead to big, big problems, even death. Also, your your body's going to keep asking for the same amount, of, uh, same amount of blood, and poor old Mr. Heart has to keep supplying it with it. So, just like when you go to the gym to go lift and get them gains or that perfect IG booty, the same thing's going to happen to your heart. It's going to start getting larger. The harder has to work. Unfortunately, your heart's not going to be taking in all those awesome selfies. It's just going to start malfunctioning over time. Uh, so what happens is that the wall of the heart here starts getting thicker. All right, it starts getting bigger. Boom, boom, boom. And I know metaphorically having a big heart is a great thing, but literally you don't want to have a giant heart. That's really, really bad. It doesn't work well over time, and then you're going to start developing all sorts of problems. So another thing is that bacteria love to settle down on places where they can latch onto. And with these abnormal valves, because they were down sooner, they have a little bit more damage on them. And so because of that, there's also a higher chance of getting infection. When you go to the dentist and you have a valve problem, a lot of times they will give you antibiotics before a surgical procedure in case any of those uh, nasty mouth bugs make it into your bloodstream. There's a little bit of controversy as far as giving antibiotics for that kind of stuff. But we still know that having these valve abnormalities or damaged valves puts you at increased risk of getting a, an infection inside the heart. So that's the issue with having a bicuspid aortic valve. Um, normally there's nothing you do about it. It goes on without any kind of issues until it starts causing more and more narrowing and more and more uh, stenosis. But if it's not having any symptoms, then it's just like there was no problem at all. Uh, you just got to keep in mind that that's something that you might have to deal with later on in life. Uh, when it does start causing, uh, causing symptoms, then we would need to change the valve out and you would have a valve replacement with either a, an artificial valve or a biological valve. Uh, but that's something for another day. Uh, I hope this uh, was interesting, and if you have any questions or you like more detail on anything I mentioned, feel free to ask. If you have any topics you would like to hear about uh, or medical things that you would like sim uh, simplified so you can understand them better and know what the doctor is talking about, uh, feel free to ask or comment about also. All right, have a good one, Instagram, and see you later.